We actually don't know what these chambers were for. No, no burial of any pharaoh was ever found inside the Great Pyramid. Is there not a hidden chamber as well? In fact, there is a whole underworld at Giza. This is beginning to be recognized. I think there's a lot more remains to be discovered under the Giza Plateau. Yeah. The mysterious and captivating Osiris Shaft, nestled in the heart of the Giza Plateau, is a marvel that dates back to the New Kingdom period of ancient Egypt, a time spanning from about 1550 to 1070 BC. This era, renowned for its unprecedented architectural, artistic and religious advancements, represents the zenith of Egyptian civilization's power and cultural prowess. We actually haven't done a whole lot of studying on the other pyramids. It's something that's severely lacking. It's within this rich historical tapestry that the construction of the Osiris shaft is situated, suggesting its considerable significance in the religious or funerary practices of the time, reflective of the profound spiritual and theological currents that characterized the period. That, that is who Osiris is. His image is seen in the sky as the constellation of, of Orion. The New Kingdom is often heralded as the peak of ancient Egypt's glory, marked by immense prosperity and cultural flowering. The decision to construct the Osiris shaft during such a time indicates its potential importance, perhaps serving as a monumental or ceremonial site linked to the elite or royalty. This was also a period when the cult of Osiris, the deity of the afterlife and resurrection, gained substantial traction, reflecting the era's deep religious fervor. The very naming and intended use of the Osiris shaft likely underscore a direct engagement with rituals or beliefs centered around Osiris, underscoring the structure's religious significance. Interestingly, the Osiris shaft didn't merely belong to the New Kingdom, but appeared to have found relevance and was repurposed during the Sate period, around the 26th dynasty, from 664 to 525 BC. We're looking at the remnants of a lost civilization. They might have left cultural knowledge, they might have left architecture and objects. This era, known for its retrospective look at Egypt's illustrious past in an attempt to revive the splendor of earlier times, saw the shaft being reused or adapted for new purposes. This inclination towards embracing ancient traditions may have inspired the shaft's restoration or modification, aiming to reconnect with the spiritual and cultural achievements of the New Kingdom era. Artifacts and inscriptions unearthed within the shaft, dating from various periods, provide a glimpse into its sustained or evolving significance over centuries. The exploration journey of the Osiris shaft, particularly spearheaded by Giovanni Battista Belzoni in 1817, marks a pivotal chapter in the annals of Egyptology. Belzoni's venture into the shaft not only unveiled its architectural complexity and the depths it reached, but also bridged a connection to the ancient world for the West. His efforts at the Giza Plateau, especially his work with the Osiris Shaft, laid the foundational stones for the field of Egyptology, opening up new avenues for understanding ancient Egyptian engineering. The Shaft's proximity to the iconic pyramids, especially its location south of Khafre's Causeway, enriches its historical and cultural context. Khafre's Pyramid, a testament to Egyptian architectural finesse and religious zeal, casts a long shadow over the Osiris shaft, creating a stark contrast between the visible grandeur of the pyramids and the hidden depths of the shaft. This juxtaposition not only highlights the Egyptians' mastery over both the celestial and the underworld realms, but also suggests the shaft's strategic placement. Ancient Egyptians revered celestial alignments, and the positioning of the Osiris shaft could well have been meticulously chosen to fit into a larger cosmological framework. Diving into the heart of the Giza Plateau, the Osiris shaft is not just a marvel of ancient Egyptian engineering, but a deep dive into the spiritual and symbolic realms that defined this ancient civilization. With its three distinct levels carved into the limestone, leading down around 100 feet, this architectural masterpiece reveals the Egyptians' prowess in engineering and their nuanced approach to the afterlife's mysteries. Each level, connected by vertical shafts, plays its unique role in this journey to the beyond, showcasing a civilization that was as much about the spiritual as it was about the tangible. The first level of the Osiris shaft acts as the initial threshold, a gateway that ushers one from the land of the living into the depths of the afterlife. Its modest design, quite unlike the grandeur seen in other Egyptian tombs and monuments, possibly served a dual purpose. 
Not only might it have been intended to ward off the uninitiated, preserving the sanctity of the rites within, but it also set the tone for the soul's journey ahead. This chamber, likely a stage for preliminary rituals, echoes with the remnants of purification rites, offerings to deities, and the recitation of spells from the Book of the Dead, each ritual meticulously designed to guide and protect the soul on its passage through the underworld. The engineering feat of constructing this chamber directly into the bedrock cannot be overstated. The ancient Egyptians showcased their unparalleled skill and understanding of their environment, executing such precision and stability deep within the earth. The smooth walls and exact dimensions of the chamber are a testament to their craftsmanship, ensuring the site's longevity and safeguarding it against collapses and water ingress. Proceeding deeper into the Osiris shaft brings us to the second level, a realm that holds a pivotal position in both the architectural grandeur and the spiritual odyssey encapsulated within this ancient edifice. This layer beneath the Earth's surface serves as a vital transition phase in the soul's journey, marking a profound shift from the mortal world to the enigmatic depths of the afterlife. Architecturally, this level distinguishes itself from the more modest first level through its elaborate design. Niches meticulously carved into the walls hint at their role as sanctuaries for statues, offering vessels or other objects of ritual significance, each contributing to the intricate ritual practices emblematic of this phase in the afterlife journey. The spatial complexity of this level, with its alcoves and expanded areas, suggests a setup intended for more elaborate ceremonies or a larger congregation of participants, possibly including priests or the deceased's kin underscoring a communal dimension to these rites. Indeed, the architectural layout of this level, designed to accommodate multiple individuals, speaks volumes about the ancient Egyptians' conception of the afterlife. It suggests a belief in a collective journey of souls, or underscores the importance of maintaining social and familial bonds beyond death. This collective aspect of the second level of the Osiris shaft reinforces the idea that the journey through the afterlife was envisioned not as a solitary voyage, but as a shared experience, woven into the fabric of the community and the cosmos. Descending into the depths of the Osiris shaft, we reach its third and deepest level, a place that is physically profound. Here we find ourselves in the closest proximity to the mythical underworld of the ancient Egyptians, a realm that symbolizes the ultimate destination in the afterlife journey, rebirth or resurrection. This level, akin to the duet, the ancient Egyptian netherworld where souls are judged and, if deemed worthy, reborn, holds a central place in the narrative of death and rebirth that permeates Egyptian mythology. Central to this chamber's significance is its alignment with the mythology of Osiris, the god of the afterlife, the dead, and rebirth. The story of Osiris's death and resurrection is not just a myth, it's the bedrock of the Egyptian understanding of the afterlife representing the cycle of life, death, and rebirth. This chamber, situated at the heart of the Osiris shaft, is a direct nod to this myth, embodying the deepest hopes and beliefs of the ancient Egyptians regarding the afterlife. The presence of water in this chamber adds another layer of symbolic depth. Far from being a mere physical feature, the water represents the primeval waters of Nun, chaotic yet essential for creation and rebirth in Egyptian cosmology. This connection to the waters of Nun, mirroring the life-giving floods of the Nile, highlights water's role as a source of life and a means for regeneration. It's in this water-filled chamber that the deceased undergoes a final purification, a crucial step preparing their soul for rebirth into the afterlife. This practice aligns with the ritual use of water for cleansing and purification. The architecture of this deepest chamber is meticulously crafted, reflecting its sacred purpose. More complex and solemn than the levels above, it is designed to house the most sacred elements associated with the afterlife rituals. The possibility that this chamber could have contained a cenotaph, serving as a symbolic tomb for Osiris, or even been an actual burial place for high-ranking individuals or priests, adds to its importance. The inclusion of a sarcophagus within this chamber, surrounded by the symbolic waters of Nun, emphasizes the significance of this space not just as a site of burial, but as a profound statement on the Egyptian concept of the afterlife. This journey through the Osiris shaft, from its entrance to the deepest level, offers a vivid glimpse into the ancient Egyptian worldview. It reveals a civilization deeply engaged with the mysteries of life and death, 
Expressing these themes through the complex architecture and symbolic depth of structures like the Osiris Shaft, here at the heart of the ancient world, we find a profound expression of hope for rebirth and a life beyond death, encapsulated within the sacred spaces of the Osiris Shaft.